chapter 13. After cutting the dragon free, Min Lee's knife was dull and the skin on her fingers and toes were wrinkled from having been in the dragon's lake of tears for so long. She was also very thirsty. The dragon offered to carry her to the freshwater stream. He knew the forest well. You'll get there much faster, he said. Min Lee was a little doubtful about riding the dragon. It was one thing to climb on top of him while he was half covered by water, but now on dry land, she realized how large he really was. The dragon was long, as long as the street in front of Min Lee's house. If he stretched himself up on his arms and legs, he was as tall as a bird's nest in the tree, she realized. Even now, bending down for her, he was higher than her house. But he bent his elbow for her like a step, and with two hands, she boosted herself up and then climbed onto his back. The round ball in the dragon's head was the size of a small melon, just big enough for her to wrap two hands around. She clutched it as the dragon began to move. It was faster, but not much. The dragon was nimble, but his large body had to, be con had to constantly maneuver around trees and rocks, so it was awkward going. The constant jerking made Min Lee feel like she was riding a huge water buffalo. As the dragon ducked underneath branches and swerved through trees, Min Lee understood why most dragons flew. Dragon, Min Lee asked suddenly, how old are you? Old, the dragon said, and again, it seemed a question he had never been asked. I do not know. Well, Min Lee said, how long have you been in this forest? The dragon thought hard. A long time, he told her. I remember when a bird flew from the sky and dropped a peach pit onto the ground. I watched that pit grow into a tree and the peaches fell from the tree and more trees grew from the pits of those peaches until it became the grove of peach trees that the monkeys have now taken over. He is very old, Minley thought to herself imagining the growth of the trees. Dragon must have been in this forest for a hundred years. And she felt a pang of pity as she imagined the dragon, alone, unable to fly, endlessly struggling between trees and branches. After picking up her things and drinking at the freshwater stream, Min Lee climbed back onto the dragon's back. She soon fell asleep, her head on the dragon's ball and her hand holding her rice bowl. Noticing she was asleep, the dragon moved slowly and quietly, even when the water from Minley's compass splashed and trickled down his nose. It was only when a loud shrieking filled the forest that Minley woke. It was such a wild and harsh noise that she bolted up, her eyes open in fear. Do not worry, the dragon told her. It is just the monkeys. And it was the monkeys. Even though the sun was dimming, Min Lee could still see the monkeys clamoring in the trees. Even though Min Lee could not count that many of them, their screaming made it sound as if there were thousands. We are getting close to the peach trees, the dragon told Min Lee. They are getting angry. Stop here, Min Lee said. She climbed off the dragon's back and she could still see the monkeys through the leaves and branches, their bared teeth flashing. Those peach trees are exactly the direction we want to go, Minley said. We have to get past the monkeys. I could still force my way through, but the monkeys would attack you, Dragon said. I am not sure if we could get you through unharmed. Listen to them. As the monkeys continued to scream, Minley covered her ears with her hands, but she could still hear them. It seemed like they were screeching, Get away from here! Hours! Hours! All hours! You are right, Minley told the dragon. They are not going to let us through. But you said this is the way to the old man of the moon, said the dragon, correct? Minley nodded. The monkey's shrieks were starting to sound like hysterical laughter, getting louder and louder like a volcano about to erupt. She looked from side to side, but the monkeys seemed to be everywhere. There was no way around him, around them. Then, the dragon asked. What are we going to do? 